Hello, good evening, all of you. Those who have been following Brazil Forum UK 2020, welcome back. I am Matheus Mendonça. I study master degree in the London School of London, and I will be following you in this panel, new technologies and political supports. This is another event that's been possible thanks to the work of volunteers of organizing community the support of uh, that foundation, Lemon Foundation, Devita, and uh, Law Firm PGMBM, and our broadcast partner, we start the newspaper. To start this, this discussion, I have the pleasure of inviting very, four very special participants of the journalists, the governor of Rio Grande do Norte, Fátima Bezerra, the professor of the University of São Paulo, Vladimir Saflat, and the chair of the Chamber of Deputies. The chair of the Chamber of Deputies, Rodrigo Maia, had a meeting. He could not postpone his attendance to the meeting as soon as he finishes. The idea is he will connect to us as quick as possible. We hope it will happen as soon as possible. Thank you for the invitation. It is a pleasure. So the proposal of this panel is to discuss the change in the Brazilian field. The political distance in Brazil had lots of issues, a relation with the state. So there has been a reconfiguration of this political scenario that got power and new traditions were renewed. Coronavirus, coronavirus had an issue in that scenario, governors, mayors. How do you uh, explain this transformation where we have the uh, political dispute between the left and the right and uh, how this impacted in ideology? Perhaps we can start with the governor, Fatima Bezerra. Could you please start with her? I would like uh, to greet everybody that is following us via social media. Uh, my greetings to you as well. I would like to thank you for this invitation. It is an honor to be part of the Brazil Forum. And it's great to be here by the side of the journalist Vera Magalhães and uh, to be talking with Vladimir Safatli and the uh, president of the chamber, Mr. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Maia, who will be here in a short while. Taking into account the situation that we had, uh, we were considering that the political disputes that we had in the country, and these, they had as a reference the Constitutional Pact uh, from 1988. And that's what uh, happened in all the governments that we had since, Sarney, Collor, and uh, during the mandates of Fernando Henrique Cardoso, and so on and so forth. And, um, and the Constitution of 1988 was the reference for all the uh, political conjecture in the country. 
of course, we had some clashes from the right and the left during that time, but this was routine, expected routine, uh, the constitution. But things changed since the removal of the president Dilma. Uh, and of course, her impeachment was a farce. Um, and because she did not uh, uh, she did not commit any crime of responsibility um, and i think that that was an attempt an attempt against her mandate uh, because it is in the vote uh, of course we had the mo the vote um, that we are in this um, it is via the vote that we take that that we can decide what happens in politics actually i did not believe that that was going to happen with her but whatever happened happened within the democratic movement uh, of course uh the constitution of 88 uh it became like a uh, like a dream because within this democratic uh, pact we the, we saw a we saw uh, the damage to the democratic rights and and the, if we look for example what it was the agenda implemented but by, by tema when he took government it was not the agenda that it has been planned for the the government that he was elected for um, um lula uh, who was disputing uh that election uh, after Temer and the image of Alckmin was associated to Temer and in that context that field makes an option for Ronnie and then he was victorious in, in the election over this process what we have not believing the institutions and then we know it's always a good recipe you know that you favor coming alternatives that are anti-democratic in the current context these political blocks they are a reorganization process in brazil in the conservative field but also democratic fields in the conservative because while they have the unity needed by Gates minister, but there are differences with human rights, the institutional relations, and also the vote. There are differences on what is the best way out for the country. This is how it has happened. It's going to be more and more about uh, the way which is either left uh, wing or right wing so you know that you complement the political summary we have of, out of that in all those fields we have there are the dispute the new right wing will emerge as victorious or not is that the popular field this is an open discussion, but there is an issue that we must mention. All this scenario at the moment the country is living is being worse with the conditions of the pandemic. As the second or the second country in the world with deaths. Over 55 uh, numbers, dreams, stories. Here in the North, we have around 800. So Brazil becomes the epicenter of the pandemic. 
and there is in that context that we have to take into account that we must be made to have responsibility to face those issues. The sanitary crisis with the magnitude it has. Brazil is one of the few countries in the world facing the sanitary crisis, which is also institutional and political and economic. So the sanitary crisis has brought even more problems into that whole reality. So I think, let's finish, we must have the maturity and serenity because that answer will be important for the articulation. And that has been the sense of stimulating an action with all national authorities to face that. It should be scientific, uh, balanced. Uh, and it is a moment for us to think what is most sacred for us, which is the defense of life that goes through healthcare of our people. All the rest will be secondary. Thank you, Governor. Now I'll pass it to Vera Magalhães, please. Good evening, all of you. Good evening, Mateus. The organizers of the forum for the invitation to be here. In London and Oxford discussing those issues. It's good technology will allow us to keep the, the, the discussion. Two views from the point of view of uh, political agents in the concepts of new ideologies. I think it's different uh, with the governor. I agree with her when she says the constitution is important. Of center right or right. And what is in the field of democracy within a completely democratic spectrum. I think it starts changing as of 2013. Then we can have signals that there was a certain issue with the political and the institutionality. At that moment, Juma had a record of issues in 2013. And she was caught by surprise. And they were restricted to some banal issue, which was the bus fee readjustment, which included sectors of the left wing, right wing. And we don't know what was done from the ideology point of view. As of then, we should wait for the popular, the popularity and the Lava Jato came uh, after that. And then it struck uh, the government. It starts uh, showing the state companies and directors in a certain conspiracy with political help and companies from the construction sector and bribery all that was unveiled in 2014 beside an economic problem during the second mandate of Duma with her election. That was a re-election of the president. 
decided almost mechanically. In the car wash operation, right after the re election, Lava Jat starts showing severe facts and bring the investigations closer to the plower with the panelas and then street riots with more and more people. what was being investigated and it was growing in the second semester. We have one hour to discuss what led So, uh, and if there is a way for us to just to debate the, the criticism of the lava wash uh, with the car wash uh, investi investigation, and um, all these uh, factors is, led us to the to the impeachment, and we think that we could see that uh, there was a deficit of participation from the the president Dilma at that time. With, with, with the people that started all those those forces uh, for the impeachment, they had the aim of achieving the uh, of achieving the uh, impeachment, and this is sponsored by those in the federal power. And from then on, we had a uh, tema. Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro came waved, uh, came into that wave of as the person who came to end with all these problems. And I think that there was a problem uh, with the press and and the situation, the political situation in the country was more fragmented than we thought. And uh, uh, there is also at that point in hindsight. Uh, uh, the lack of importance that we gave to the uh, social. There are several moments of this construction that we can pinpoint and uh, lack of responsibility from the different agents involved in the problem. But then if you think from uh, from 2013, actually the, poli uh, the, the politics Clean, I started another path. I would like to hear Professor Vladimir. I would like to thank uh, all of you for this invitation to be here. It's uh, a great opportunity to be here with you and Vera Magalhães and with uh, the governor Fatima. Uh, the way that I read this situation uh, is, is as follows. How did we get here? If I look at the past, uh, it's impossible for me to not uh, recall the different debates that we had. And all these debates, they were uh, seeking the same aim. And I remember that this was talked about by different people. Uh, I remember that in some of these debates, uh, one of one statement that was common in all of them is saying that Brazil had the most consolidated democracy of the BRIC, uh, BRIC countries. And uh, what we see is that what seemed like uh, democratic stability is uh, it wasn't. And nowadays we have to see, we have to acknowledge that we were blind. We were blind to the situation. And we could not see this new paradigm that the Brazilian uh, constitution was uh, placed upon. It is, it is not that difficult to understand how we got where we are. If we do not look, um, it is not difficult to, to check where we are if uh, we look at, at uh, the elements that it was built up in the politics uh, post dictatorship. It is very difficult to talk of uh, who was who was attempting to gain power because uh, 
because at that at that point we had a consortium that it was completely heter uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, we had the party from uh, Mr. Marcos Feliciano. The interpreter must apologize, but the sound uh, is not good. So the interpreter cannot follow what is being said by the speaker. I'm sorry. It is, uh, it is difficult to not remember Getúlio Vargas Uh, it is very hard uh, to govern with all these different uh, in contradiction to each other. A kind of uh, management of opportunism and parallelism. I would say the new republic had that characteristic. This paradigma was saying that Brazil had great reforms for good and evil from the point of view of the liberal judgment. So far, Brazil had some problems because instead of thinking of some country in the economies whose two main companies are state-run companies, or four of the main banks are run, Banco do Brasil and Caixa, that demonstrates that the reform for good and evil wouldn't go ahead. And that the mix with the Brazilian state, all the violence. Nobody realized the structure. All those who were there. So this process, it reached 2013 as a moment of truth. I would say it is an exhaustion not just of the government, but a depletion of the government management, which represented the agreements of the new republic. That's why it's not just the PT government that is run out. All political actors are questioned. Because in the core of the Brazilian policy, there is an institutional desire. They will have only one translation, which is the extreme right wing, which will link that to a sort of great uh, story of authoritarianism. And there are forces that are clearly in a story of that that we forgot. The National Integral had 2 million people. I mean, so had 10% of the vote. So that demonstrates, I'd say that we get to this moment with a sort of uh, popular revolution. That's what Bolsonaro represents. There is no organization of a new political trend for the counterweight. That's why we're in this desperate situation. Thank you, Professor Vladimir. So to start our discussion, I will take what Vera and the Professor mentioned, which was this growing well enough, we have after the June 2013 riots. I'd like to ask you, Fatima, in your opinion, even after one decade of uh, governments, which was the progressive and popular democratic, why we haven't reconsolidated in the government? A strong support to PT all those waves of uh, were enough um, stopped the popular support of uh, PT from a high popularity and then it drops that it was alive this week with the candidate to UK 
the difficulty of the PT was to convince the advances on what was the huge heart of the population. Why do you think the population no longer likes PT? Of course, we must consider PT one for presidential elections. I agree when Vera Vladimir bring up 2013 because it is a paradigm. It signals the lack of uh, issues with politics, but this cannot be something for us to respect to democracy. I was in that context, and one of the things I mean is with best to be with our divergences. Those who have a history and a commitment to democracy in Brazil that had their impeachment in that responsible adventure. If PSDB had been in a process like that, not recognizing the voting the National Congress would have been that? I don't think so. Of course, when we bring up uh, car wash as an action of investigation that uh, must be created. And who revealed that for Brazil and the world was car wash, showing what we think is the selector. Obrigado, governadora. Eu vou aproveitar esse gancho, né, as provocações que a senhora colocou, e vou chamar a Vera para comentar. Vera, eu queria, queria te ouvir 
Porque eu acho que, falando ainda sobre o campo das ideologias, eu acho que talvez seja possível dizer que o antipetismo seja a ideologia mais é, dominante hoje no, no cenário político, pelo menos nos últimos anos, né? Tanto, sei lá, mesmo a esquerda ou, ou, a, ou a direita. É, o, o, que eu, o que eu gostaria de, de, de te ouvir é, pa, parece que, pelo menos uma parte dos, como a Fátima bem colocou, uma parte dos setores que apoiaram o impeachment e surfaram nesse movimento, depois acabaram perdendo bastante espaço e acabou se salientando nessa disputa uma ala mais violenta desse antipetismo. Landscape. And, um, and this uh, ended up creating a more violent anti-workers party, the so-called antipetismo. Mateus, what we have Uh, o, o, o Workers Party, they won for election. And when we talk about anti-petismo, anti-workers workers party, we, we are talking about what exact moment in the Brazilian poli politics. So, um, when we talk about Dilma, Dilma was rejected even internally in the political party. She didn't have a a uh, political experience that could compare to that one uh, from Lula. But even though uh, she had the, those limitations, she, she maintained the coalition. And um, even when we talk about the, the Mensalão, uh, uh, Initially, the Workers' Party didn't want the participation of the PMDB political party, but then later on, it was uh, totally part of it. So, um, and I think that this is very is very simplistic to to talk about anti-worker Workers' Party feeling. I think that this has to do with. So uh, when we have the representation to the uh, Superior Court and one of the demonstration that the PSDB political party uh, uh, lost uh, its space is the fact that the car wash investigation also involved the PSDB. And what it was the driver for the uh, impeachment, it was uh, the car wash investigation and PMDB, which is a political party that it was part of the Dilma government. We cannot talk just about Dilma or just about Dilma. They were together on that uh, as candidates. And so when we talk about the duo Eduardo Cunha and Tema had a role that it was stronger than the PSDB uh, on, on Dilma's impeachment. And when we look at this scenario, this landscape happening, we have to ask ourselves, where were Bolsonaro at that point? Bolsonaro was seen as a caricature of a Brazilian politician. So he wasn't. He wasn't important in the, in, the, in the politics. He was never a protagonist or the main protagonist in politics. So he was building up a network, a, a social network, uh, very important at that point, but he wasn't noticed. And people were talking about Bolsonaro, potential minister, but what he did, it was invest in the right extreme of politics, and he was sort of the Trojan horse for the uh, extreme right in Brazil. Even the Malufism uh, movement uh, was not that extreme right. Actually, uh, the success uh, that can be attributed to Bolsonaro is the fact that he started to talk about the right as the right is. So it's like uh, he came out explaining what he was for with uh, the right, extreme right in politics. 
And uh, when we talk about polarization on, on those non bases, a workers' party just left Bolsonaro create his own space because they thought that uh, they would win the election. They they did not notice uh, how the anti petismo so the anti-workers party feeling has grown in the society and uh, all these uh, different uh, forces actually and these factors is what enabled uh, bolsonaro get to power safatli i would like to ask you uh, something specific about this uh, coalition model. And this was mentioned by Vera and by Fatima. And uh, I know that before you talked about the fascism in Brazil. Could you please tell us in a briefly how this fascism a la Brazilian uh, as uh, you call, as you call it, at that mom, uh, at one point you talk about a different model of transition to democracy. So I would like uh, you to to talk a bit uh, about this uh, fascism, a la, Braz uh, a la Brazil. And if the and I would like you to tell me if you think that the Bolsonaro government is fascism. Fascism has four characteristics, and then you are going to tell me if those characteristics apply to Bolsonaro. The first characteristic is the cult of violence. So they they always work with a notion of a state from above. Uh, we have to remember that the Nazism and uh, we had we had uh, a situation in uh, our constitution of 88 uh, that uh, predicted a state of emergency. And we have a society that is also organizing uh, with this generalization uh, The second aspect that we have to look here is uh, the creation of identity, uh, identity based on nationality and the idea of a strange body that needed to be extirpated from the politics, uh, this body that needs to be extirpated from the history because it is that one that is the barrier for our nation to grow. It is this body, this strange body that needs, needs to be ex, ex, uh, need to be removed because it is impacting in our family. So, and uh, the third characteristics uh, is the creation, uh, it, it is a total ignorance and lack of compassion of the most vulnerable classes. This lack of sensitivity uh, affect, uh, uh, it goes into all the broader sense of politics. And the fourth characteristic is transforming the power uh, of, of the political power uh, being transformed in one person. So that person is the sole representative of, of politics. So he is the representative of the I. I am in the power. But then actually it forgets that uh, who holds the power is the people. So these elements are present in our Brazilian situation at the moment. And I insist that this is happening because with the, with all the end of this governability uh, in Brazil, we can see that one sector of the population 
um, uh, created these possibilities in poli politics. And this is a country. We are a country that actually never put a torturer in jail. So none of the tortures for, for our dictatorship had been punished. And it and actually, it is a country that maintained the armed forces that committed, uh, that, that were the dictators before. They are part of the, the history and uh, the functioning of the country. So this allowed us not know our history. And it seems that all these things happening from nothing. This is not the discourse of Bolsonaro, uh, uh, if you look at the discourse of Bolsonaro, you can see where he comes from. Uh, and uh, he is not outside our history. He's part of this history that we have. When we talk about, when the people say, I don't want democracy, we have to understand. What the people are trying to say is, I don't want this do democracy that I I get to know, because this is the democracy that has shown them post-dictatorship. And this is and this is democracy that people are rejecting. Uh, what people want, perhaps, is, is the democracy that I can see in my Hygienopolis uh, neighborhood in Sao Paulo. But when we look at the poorer areas of Brazil, democracy has never existed. Uh, and this, this people, what people want is a democracy that is not going to be uh, exploited by the militia, a uh, democracy that is not going to be exploited by the public powers or by anyone else. And that's what we have to work for. And from then on, after analyzing that, we have to find out what we really want for the country. Fatima, I would like to. Professor Vladimir talked about these inequalities that the Brazilian politics uh, always had. And I would like to talk about the inequalities that exist between the South, North, and Northeast in the country. You are the only uh, female state government in the uh, state governor in the country. The Northeast uh, has the recent experience of, uh, of, of being uh, in, in attrition with the federal government. So I would like to ask you, uh, what is the, um, to what extent uh, this uh, Northeast uh, alliance of, of, go of governors has the ability to articulate, to uh, work with the government at the moment. When I say that the PSDB has an important role on what happened and what is happening in the country now, what I want to say is, I want to say uh, actually that uh, it was an important uh, role, uh, but it wasn't as decadent as the PMD political party. We have to remember that the lawyer, that it was at the forefront talking to the population, was a lawyer that came from the PSDB party. I, am, I, I regret to say that the story of PSDB should never allow the PSDB to be part of that adventure that was the impeachment. And, uh, and I'm saying that because Lula was removed from the, from the political game. And Moro, even though he was in the justice ministry, and he was there just to, to, to create the, the, uh, the Kawashism in the Bolsonarism, and um, and we know 
that there is a, an, a social inequalities in the country. Uh, there is inequalities at regional level, and now the pandemic is becoming even worse, is making our lives even worse. Here in Rio Grande do Norte, we have a, uh, when I got to this state, when I, I, I assumed my mandate here, I found a collapsed state. And unfortunately, we, we still need to have, uh, when we look at the case of the pandemic, specifically, we need a national coordinated action coming from the uh, president. And because we don't have that, things are becoming even worse. And it was in this context that the Northeast government uh, representatives decided that they should start uh, this fight for uh, securing a basic income uh, to, the family, to the families in Brazil. And uh, this is because uh, here we have the the strongest inequalities in the country. And when we talk about, for example, the Bolsa Familia subsidy, uh, it benefited the families here uh, in the Northeast uh, and had a uh, uh, beneficial impact stronger than elsewhere. So, so the governors may have an expression from the political point of view we were trying to get the common way out in order to have the huge challenges. And what we're saying is, how can we face this situation? The relation with the governments of uh, the governors of Northeast Brazil and the national government, we face those situations trying to find the institutionality. I am the governor of the people of Rio Grande do Norte. It is in this context that we have the struggle, which is the right of the population. Thank you, governor. Bringing an issue And Fatima mentioned this issue of the responsibility. You mentioned uh, car wash operation. And we know about having the clean hands that talks a lot about the importance of what the car wash was as an ally. How do you assess that? Do you think the press was naive when dealing with the car wash? And how do you see the role of the press now in defending democracy? I think Lava Jato cannot lose the narrative ground. There are many facts many people who are abroad, people who admitted their crimes. They were plea bargaining. And for the first time in Brazil, businessmen were arrested and also politicians were arrested. So the legacy of the car wash, the way I see it, which is real, and the constitution as a whole was all criticism. I think Brazil suffers this issue of having the errors. Car wash has important data. And with this in Roda Viva program, he mentioned that uh, there was people gaining supporting car wash. And of course, many things happening. And with the legal process, there were several decisions that should, should have been made. And then collegiate decisions that were kept and other that were reviewed. In that aspect, I think what is important with all the issues and problems and struggles, 
and all the gaps because it was not perfect, but it did work out in that aspect. So we must be careful with our words. The fact that it was, uh, if it was a scam, why was it a scam? Even the PT country with the polarization with the former Fernando Henrique governor and with the PSDB party in the impeachment of Dilma, it is important to remember PT was out of uh, uh, FHC, a former governor in the two mandates, which brought everything up with other of uh, great front line of the country. And now has an important uh, out with Bolsonaro. The reasons for call of Dilma and the possible impeachment of Bolsonaro are different. But the way I see it, the impeachment is a political and judicial process. The three things cannot be left aside, otherwise we will make a convenient assessment of impeachment. Because there are things that we disagree and it is a scam when it uh, is against the law. So there, there must be an alignment. There will be a, a severe economic uh, crisis, a political crisis, one for the reason that doesn't have to be very strong. And I agree, although it is a fiscal fraud, they were not a mistake and which was a statistic and made by other governments. But you have the economic crisis, the popular support and juridical support. You, you have, must have that alignment. Otherwise, it's not possible. And that's what I refuse in Dilma's impeachment. I guess she was in the hands of a car wash operation. She must have had a better autonomy and a better situation in order to go into a car wash without uh, having everything already made the way she accepted. And that was a failure I saw in the role of press. But I guess that's an assessment that uh, it's important that it should have been made because you should also, because of the fact that the press, that you have the power to hire people to pay salaries because of the fact that the newspapers, they have a financial and economic crisis coming from the very activities they have. And so that's one of the reasons that I see not to having had any coverage in the car wash operation, not as having done what should have been done. And very, very quickly, I just would like to listen to the importance you see nowadays in the press, in the front of defending democracy. I think the press must follow democracy in its status of uh, the government and other areas and the editorial spaces the great means of uh, information and also the alternative press not aligned to the government. But the role is mainly that institutional and uh, safety. The unfolding the articulations, I guess the civil society should uh, have with all the political leaderships and also highlighting the character of the democracy, which I fully agree. It is in check, and that's an important uh, difference to be made. Although we may have uh, criticism to make it to ET party because of corruption and the very, the very way they were leading the economic uh, policy, the PT never attempted against democracy, even when they elected the president by the party was impeached, they accepted the result. And so it was fundamental between PT and the Bolsonarism. Very quickly, with Safatli, I'd like you to talk about this issue that we discuss about the wide front. You mentioned uh, on a paper in El País that you wrote saying the left wing has died. That generated lots of problems. 
do you think this wide front will help recover the political dispute or not? But it is something that it, that is necessary to understand democracy. I guess there are two issues there. The first of them, this government we have is is strong for political because the elementary role of a government for the population and everything. I always say the first role is protection. It doesn't protect the population. We are in a situation in which we we talk about uh, the under notifications, the rules, and we can imagine that number is two or three times higher. We may actually be with more death in relation to the pandemic within a type of policy in which the unimaginable is a policy in which the state does not express any form of grieving or pain in relation to the death that were the result of the absolute uh, negligence of the state, the impossibility of operating its most elementary process of managing crisis situations. We could imagine any president, no matter the party, what to do is to have the national unity. And in that sense, we will have to suspend uh, many processes. If Bolsonaro had uh, to government, uh, like Belo Horizonte is a continuous movement. Do not try and govern. It is institutional. If it had uh, a good government, it would demonstrate uh, he would govern. But we have no government in Brazil. What was done, what was possible to be done, was the isolation or the work of governors. So we can imagine what's going to happen next. I guess within this future, there is a fundamental issue that the government has to drop. It has to end. It has no conditions to continue. It has demonstrated it has no commitment or a minimum position against the pandemic. The consequences for Brazil, for all levels, either social, political, or economic. We cannot even imagine, we had never, we had never had in the 20th century a government like that before any democratic government in Brazil. We must find something. Well, the Paraguay war, things like that. That's why, on the other hand, In relation to the left wing, I guess the Brazilian left wing is extremely uh, destroyed, not its uh, vote electing capability, but what to provide to the Brazilian society next. From the political point of view, what type of uh, change were we trying to create? Nothing is clear. There's nothing clear. The only clear topic we have is the disrespect to social issues of recognition. Then you have the defense of uh, race equality. But that's the only thing uh, the left wing has, nothing else. What we cannot do anything to respect the economic issues of Brazilian government. Will we get back to what we did before or do we have anything new? In the Brazilian policy, we will restructure the great alliances. Or how can we govern next? So there is a whole need of a recomposition with the depletion, not just of the new republic, but the Brazilian left wing. When the cycle is over, after 13 years of government, I'd say the process of depletion was not just internal, but internal too. That had never been 
discuss minimally analytically. So I guess there is an urgent task to be done. So thank you very much, Professor Safla, before passing to close the Brazil Gym for UK. Would you like to clarify for those who just got of Rodrigo Maia as it happened with Rodrigo Maia? He was not able to participate in the panel. And then he spent only a few minutes because he had a setback and a meeting. Brazil Ford would like to apologize for that. And then the last round, I would like to listen to what, where you'd like to have a political discussion. In what direction do you think you should go and whether you think today the political powers, the, the Brazilian policy pushed that in that direction? First, the defense of life and democracy are our main uh, flags. In that sense, we must have a wide movement. It's unquestionable, the defense of life and uh, democracy. That is, we must be clear We need to get together that way for life and democracy. I guess the theological issue or anything against authoritarianism with the government, with the neo-fascist government, this dispute, we will face it from the voting point of view. For example, the cutting of uh, funds from healthcare, 95 uh, bill amendment to the constitution, not that it shouldn't be a policy for that. It is such that here as a governor, we have the dedical roof uh, law, but I got education, I got uh, safety, healthcare, I, for example, did not link the expenditures only to inflation. I linked the growth of uh, revenue. So, for example, in a voting election dispute, I should bring the discussion to education. These are the most affected areas. They are fundamental areas in the education process we all dream of that we would have with employment, uh, income distribution. The demonstration the Bolsonaro government has done to education is to scare us, it's painful. And I say that in a condition of teacher with the devastation of the ministry that have been through up just so far in destroying the policies of social inclusion in Brazil. And they're making distinction of uh, trying and attempt the economy of our institutions and the federal universities. One of the most decisive agendas for the basic education in Brazil, which is Fundap, this government gave the minimal attention. And every day in the debate of Fundap was to stop it. Rodrigo Maia is not here, but as a governor. Please take care of that on behalf of the governors. I would like to beg you add into the national discussion. 
it's important for the basic education in our young people. So I guess this discussion that you so mentioned, it should be done in a deep way in a political election process. We have the motor to defend the structural reforms that were not haven't been done so far in this pandemic showing the issue of health care in the country. This pandemic show how much it is necessary to value the Brazilian health system and the pandemic is bring to discussion. So those who demonize the role of the state. Those who think everything that is private is good and not run by the state and things should not be like that and cannot be like that. So the defense of life, democracy, at the moment, at this moment, you should call upon everybody. And then let's go on to the discussion in the political and voting process. In the role of the state, what is the size the state should have in order to guarantee rights to the workers? To guarantee public policies with quality and commercialization. The discussion of the cultural structure reform why don't we tax the dividends of the profits from the bank owners? So it is in that context, I understand both the progressist and the left wing should present. Looking into the eyes of the population, we will see what is the way so we will bring Brazil into development, employment, income distribution, and social inclusion. Vera? Thank you, Governor. Vera? I guess this was a good discussion about what brought us so far. In the topic of the whole foreign, what's next, Brazil? I agree with the Governor. If I had to close, with a unit for Brazil, I would close with what you just mentioned. Life and that we may have a minimum of governability, we, which we do not have in this issue of the pandemic. And most immediate and urgent and the defense of democracy. And I guess so we attempt every day against that, the figure of the president. He creates the crisis, he creates the attempts to democracy, the institutionality and the division of powers. The Federation in combating the pandemic. It is the generating source of the whole instability. It is almost an invitation to genocide. If we are on the right track for that, those efforts to the constitution of a wide front. And that makes it uh, unfeasible, something that may be wide. It is my front and not as wide. That's not uh, in my government, nowhere in the world. If you have a discussion like that in the wide front, and the wide front is no longer wide, it is limited. And if it is limited to an idea that it is used to rewrite the recent past and to absolve Lula and Dilma, it's that way. I guess it's got an origin of the wide front and non-participation of former President Lula expose his fragility as the leader of the left wing. And uh, we have uh, the governor Fajma, and he defended the wide front and says, 
I guess he is wrong in that case. He wants to be above left wing and above PT, and he dictates the destinations of PT. It is difficult for us to have the project Professor Vladimir mentioned. When we emphasize on the identity is not, not sufficient for the country the way the governor mentioned, we, knew, we need to discuss uh, the role of education and health care and the emphasis on the identity is important and it helps explain Bolsonaro. This is culture, he uh, invests in cultural war and mystifications and other things like that. He understands the part of society is scared from this identity discussion and lacking a discussion in other aspects. He stigmatizes the minorities and then goes to another problem that gets him close to Faso because he saw a window of opportunity with the political right, which is a way of classifying, helps explaining Bolsonaro being accepted by that. So the left wing has to receive priorities. And I'm not sure whether we are on the right track. I guess Bolsonaro, when he creates this emergency assessment that he could make eternal because it is necessary that we need, he's taking a part of the left wing, which is the basic income, taking for him in a risk of exchanging Bolsonaro has a great chance of having his north grow his support growing in northeast in C and class if he continues having a recomposition of the center and talking to the institutions he will go through this issue thank you to the all that and then he'll be like i guess the left wing has to articulate do something and understand what's happening having a discussion and not wanting to receive the past in the base of uh, the popular debate, and then we will have Bolsonaro for four more years. Thank you, Vera. Professor Vladimir, I think that we have to have a lot of patience because this fight has a lot to go on. After all the all the difficulties that we had, uh, this president has still a support of 30%. So it means that he created attraction with this population. And if you look at the transformation that we are having at the moment, we have a qualitative uh, change on the support that uh, Bolsonaro has. So he's having more and more uh, popular support and uh, shows that we have a very serious problem in the country. And this problem demands a new movement. And one is uh, the movement of understanding uh, that we have a government that is completely outside the limit of negotiation. When we talk about uh, all this broad front being from the uh, left wing or right wing, what we have to uh, what we have to to see is that some of them are just trying to get a new, a better negotiation with the government. So I have uh, to really question myself about how engaged and how committed these different parties are to really improve uh, the situation for the country. It seems to me that the majority is still just looking for uh, something to improve on their own sides. Despite the difficulties in, in delivering so little uh, to the population, Bolsonaro is, is still a government that has the support of their population. So uh, Bolsonaro still has this capacity of bringing one sector here, bringing another sector there. 
and uh, and he tried that uh, and and this is exactly like what Kola tried to do when he was about to be impeached I think that Brazil has to face a few issues that they never wanted to face. This is a country that has a base, uh, slavery based for development that, uh, that it starts here in and then uh, here in, in Brazil we have two types of death, for example. Uh, so what this government what this government is doing is applying the same logic that we had before. Before we talked about the death with funerals and people that just died in Islam, that no one were worried about that. What this government is doing is disseminating that second type of death that nobody is bothered about. And this is being played against us. We have to understand what is the type of chaos normalization that is going on at the moment. So we can solve the situation once for all. Uh, professor, thank you. Thank you, Fatima Vera, for, the, for accepting the invitation to be here. Uh, taking advantage of this uh, constructive debate and uh, in acknowledgement of these extraordinary times that we are living in the country, uh, Brazil Forum is supporting a awareness campaign related to the topic of the day. Today, I would like to highlight the work developed by Kufa, the uh, the Soul Central, uh, the Islam Soul Center. Uh, that has a campaign, uh, awareness campaign and uh, fundraising to give assistance to women communities during the pandemic. So whatever is uh, fundraised via the Brazil Forum uh, and in its social media will be used to help women and their families. So I would like to thank all the panelists for uh, all the panelists their contributions. Thank you, Fatima, Vera, and Vladimir. I, I think that we have shown here that it's possible to debate in a healthy way uh, what is going on in Brazil. We can progress on that. I would like also to thank the voluntary, the voluntary team that is organizing this forum, in particular, Ana Carolina Revoredo, Gabriel Sarmeto, John Quintela, Leonardo de Benici, Luiz Hegeman, and Marco Rodrigo. They were responsible for the elaboration of this uh, politics. I would like to thank also Studio 42 for the production, across for the interpreting in English, my differences for the interpreting in sign language, TV Estadão for the broadcast, and you to be here with us. You can uh, view this, uh, the recording of this panel at any point that you want in our social media. And we're going to be here on Monday, 29th, at 5 p.m. Brazil time, 9 p.m. UK time. On Monday, 29th, we are going to uh, debate the future of the Brazilian economy and the worldwide economy. So we wait for you there.